Hello there, welcome to the show. Today I'm talking about X-Men Apocalypse. Now X-Men Apocalypse is the six, I think, there's a six main X-Men film, but there's also, uh, you've also got the two Wolverine films and Deadpool within that same series too, so it's like, it's like number nine now really, but um, it's a six of the mainline ones. And it's been bashed pretty badly. Critically, it's sort of in the middle, I mean, it's probably the worst we've used for a while and it's been compared to uh, X-Men 3 The Last Stand which was before then this film was thought was the worst X-Men film and to be honest I still think X-Men 3 The Last Stand is the worst X-Men film you know I still think it's, this film's way better than X-Men 3 I mean uh, X-Men 3 had a lot of problems but the main problem was the dialogue because the dialogue was atrocious a lot of it and this one even though there's lots of problems in the film at least the, the character stuff works a lot better than X-Men 3 and you feel there's a point to a lot of it. In X-Men 3 you felt like things were made up as they went and there was lots of construction problems that should have been solved that never was. But I'll get to that when I actually talk about X-Men 3 in the future. Um, but this film is a good film. I mean it's a very flawed film but it's better than the reputation that's been getting suggests. I think one of the problems is it's just it's followed Deadpool which was a complete reinvention of this universe and um, was very funny and very sarcastic and it's also followed Civil War which was a terrific look at a uh, superhero story with lots of characters who are fighting each other which this one is also doing and but at least it's a hell of a lot better than Batman v Superman <laughs> you know it, it works a little bit on that film. Uh, the thing is, X Men invented this where he was fighting each other. I mean, they're the ones who started it in like 2000. I mean, they're the ones who really had a lot of X, a lot of like superhero characters together. First time around, they're the ones who actually sort of invented all this kind of we can have more than one hero in a story and how to juggle them. I mean, they've been doing it for years. Unfortunately, uh, when someone else did it terrifically, it was the time they did that like. A little bit less than terrifically. Uh, I mean, two years ago it was Winter Soldier, which did terrific, then it was the X Men Days of Future Past, which was also terrific, so no one, everyone was very happy. And this time round, one slightly better than the other. But Apocalypse is a, it's a, little, it's, it's a good, solid film. It's good entertainment. It just it fails in certain other areas. The biggest failure is Apocalypse. Apocalypse could have been taken at this film and no one would have cared. And it would, and you know, you could have done a first in this film without Apocalypse and it, it wouldn't have changed much, really. I mean, all Apocalypse does is come in, tell people they can be better than they are. Some believe them and join them. They fight other mutants and Apocalypse dies. And that's really the plot. I mean, he does, doesn't do much. He just, he's just there. And when you come out of the film, you're thinking, you didn't really need him. He just, he didn't do anything that was that interesting or that important. He's just an old world god but he just spouted the same old stuff you've seen before and didn't have any weird character quirks that made you were made you fascinating. He just felt like this guy who was the baddie. You know, next men tends to have Minito as a more ambiguous antagonist. When you have someone who's worse than Minito as a villain, they even usually give him like someone in X Men two they gave the Brian Cox villain some shading to see why he was like the way he was and they always tend to do that with the villains the villains tend to have a motivation that I'm just I want to kill everybody they tend to want something and even though you don't agree with their, what they want it still makes sense it still, still compels a character arc this one Apocalypse it just nev they never found the thing that made them compelling to people and you never see why uh, the people that go from go from beyond the fact that he gives more powers and he gives a direction of I'm going to solve everything, and it becomes obvious pretty quickly he can't. He's just a big bad villain. That's the worst part of the film, though. I mean, Oscar Isaac does his best, but he can't do much for no material, and they never find a way to. In the first half of the movie. You're no longer expecting something more that's going to emerge in the second half of the movie. Then you get to the second half of the movie and you realise no, there's nothing really to the character. So it becomes a case of what else is in the movie. 
luckily there's a lot of other good stuff in the movie. I mean, the main thing is Magneto again steals the show. I mean, beginning this film, he's trying to live a normal life with her, has a family, he's trying to disappear, he's working in Eastern Europe, not showing any mutant powers, he just wants to go on with life and turn his back on the world basically, and just bring up a family. He's found out who he is and during the time uh, and when they confront him, things go wrong, his family's killed. It's not like they're trying to kill his family, it's just a case of things go wrong, accidents happen, and everything gets very tragic very quickly. And this, and this leads up to the, this is the best sequence in the film. Because I mean, Nito just loses it completely and it makes him pretty much easy to be manipulated by Apocalypse, who says pretty much I can give you all you want, all you wanted. And, and what Nietzsche wanted as lost was mutants to rise. So he's an easy get for Apocalypse. But then again you think, well, if his family had been killed, all he had to do was have Magneto in a rage and causing havoc in the world. And that, that would still have done the same effect on the heroes trying to stop him. Like, all I have to do is have a, a friend's gone bananas. How do we stop this before it's out of control? And I would have had all the same beats of the film without Apocalypse. So you've got two plots that are mirroring each other, but they're just pretty much hitting the same beats, so you're getting really a lot of repeats. One guy wants to take over the world, one guy wants revenge in the world. But it's, it's the same scenes, but one's so much better than her. So whenever you get to Apocalypse, it's like, that's ah, him again. I would rather see the better version of these scenes, which is the Fastbender stuff. And so it just becomes like, you don't need Apocalypse at all. The rest of the story would have worked with film. And it becomes frustrating because it's almost like the film starts to realise that as it goes on, because Apocalypse tends to be cut down as much as possible the further the film goes on. It's like they realise that some of these scenes aren't working as well as we hoped. And the interaction between the the older characters who have a connection with each other works better than this new character. So they always, they always bring it back between uh, Magneto and Xavier. Because that's where the film works. And that's where what's needed. And there's also there's a subplot with um, basically his friends are trying to get him back before he goes too far. And you know, uh, Mystique is the one that goes to Xavier and says we have to stop, we have to find a way to help him because he's, he's just lost it, we have to help. And it has become her goal through the film but she's also trying to cause Xavier's kidnapped fairly early on, she has to become the leader of the X-Men and take what's available which is basically a few mutants, a bunch of kids and try and unite them to actually fight Apocalypse and rescue Xavier and try and stop the end of the world. Now the actual half of it where they're trying to save Xavier and they're trying to combine their strengths, all of that's good. I mean that's that's terrific. I mean you see the kids try to come into the power, you see the young Cyclops, young Jean Grey, they're trying to discover how to control themselves, how do they, they work in this world, all that stuff's good. At some point most of the X-Men are captured and they have to try and help them escape. And they don't know what to do because they've never been trained for any of this stuff. They're just Improvising and running into Wolverine, who's in the Weapon X program. All that stuff has nothing to do with the actual main plot of Storm Apocalypse, but it's better than the Apocalypse stuff, so it's like, just give me that stuff. I'd rather see that because that's, that's what I want to see. The Apocalypse bit is like the boring bit, but this stuff's really good. So even though it's starting to do the plot, but yeah, I get the idea of them slowly coming into the road and trying to they're figuring stuff out, and um, the Wolverine being in here. It helps set up them figuring stuff out, how to help, and it helps them build towards the climax where they go in as X-Men basically to fight Apocalypse. All that stuff's terrific. Any of the human stuff, Brent Singer's very good at that stuff, he knows what he's doing. And the key puts into the, all these films when he directs them comes through here because all the details are great because they're pared down so you get the basics. Nothing takes too long. You get a basic story of what they need to get from A to B to C, but it's in a very humane way, so you actually have interest in the characters, so all the characters have their moments to shine, to get get to the next story point and uh, to deliver what they have to deliver. So it's, very, it's just terrific. All that stuff, the X-Men as a come together is great. 
watching uh, Magneto as he's recovering from the loss of his family and getting rageful and just losing it, all that stuff's great. Xavier tried to defend his pacifist principles against the reality that the world's not as good as he hoped it would be is also great because it solidifies his focus on I'm going to be better than what they want but also shows he's, he's starting to realise he can be blind to the world he has to find a way around what the world actually is and try and be in the world more than he ever was before so all that stuff's terrific it's developed well from the last film and it shows all the characters are growing a bit more and they're very, very close to what you saw in the first X-Men films so everything's working well as a prequel they're, they're getting to the point where the old new films would come back, would basically um, join up all that stuff's great but again there's, there's a plot with Apocalypse to deal with and that's like um, the bit that I'm sure is the bit that's getting the bad reviews because it's the thing that just drags it down repeatedly it's like no one, you don't care like whenever you get in the final scenes with the faced him and his saucemen which is Magneto, uh, Storm and two others, one angel guy and Cyclops or someone who's got these fancy kind of sword things you're interested in the fights because things are good at the fights so between mutants who have different powers and how those interact and how the variations you can do with them all that stuff is great, all the emotion between the char characters are great it's just, the, you, there's no, they're not really fighting for they're fighting to save the world but you don't really feel it because Apocalypse doesn't work but all the interactions work so it's like a half and half, that's why I was saying earlier you'd lose Apocalypse easily and the film would probably work better because you don't need him, you just need them to be angry at each other and see them try to find a way out of it that would work for the film and you wouldn't have a problem because it worked in Civil War and Civil War is basically an excellent film in, in lots of ways I mean, it's a Marvel version of the X-Men films, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Cinematic Universe version of, you know, X-Men. But it's still essentially an X-Men type of film. And here they go for the big villain, like, things that have killed Marvel films in the past, which was like, the big villain like in Thor Dark World, or something where the villain's too big for the film. And they go that, that mistake this time. Make and um, there are, I mean, there can place all this. Let's just reboot the university after this failure. Well, it's not a failure, it's just a film that wasn't as good as it should have been. But they're, they're already making other films, and they'll, they'll probably have seen that well before we saw the film and they'll probably course correct it. Like, okay, let's not go as big as this again. This is this was just the wrong mix. I mean, I'm, su I'm sure they're uh, they can see what 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 didn't work in the film. So, um I think I would be fine with the X-Men films after this one. It's just like one area of the film didn't work. And that's why the film's doing, not doing as well because there's one bit that sticks as a mistake. That happens. But it's, I mean, actually it was one of those films where I still come out really enjoying it because all the good stuff made up for the bad stuff. And even the stuff that was overdone, there's a bit where Magneto goes to Auschwitz and destroys it. The scene we see, part of the scene we have seen uh, Fastbender show, I mean it was pain about the situation, it's terrific. Then you see some, a lot of special effects, which is less terrific, and you're thinking, all you have to do is cut in him and give the general idea what's happening and then move away. And I mean, fine. So they did the, the Hollywood special effects thing, and it's like, you don't need that, you just don't need that in this film. It's out of place. Then later on the, the film where Apocalypse plans went to fruition, he's going to destroy the world and he's using the mutants' powers to cause havoc. It's, there's not that much of it, but it shows, there's enough to show you there's a lot of bad stuff going on. Unfortunately, some of the effects aren't as good there, and it takes away from the central conflict, and it's just not as compelling as what else is going on in the film. So, it's, you, you, it's just like you're watching something we cut in an X-Men film that doesn't really belong in an X-Men film. It just doesn't seem to fit. And it's a shame because it's just like... They obviously they tried their best to make it fit, but it just didn't quite... didn't really work as an X-Men film in that area. So it was a shame they went there because they spent a lot of money and stuff they didn't need to spend money on. They could have actually sa saved money in that and made a better film by not doing that. So 
it's kind of, it's what's that thing with they do in movies sometimes they spend a lot of money in a sequence no one wants to see because just out of I want to fear or just this case I think there's a mistake I was trying something new to try and push it forward and do something different but it just felt very old because other films had done it they weren't X-Men films and it was they were making a mistake other films had made but it's not like the Batman v Superman 20 minute like um, sequence where they're destroying everything <laughs> for no apparent reason. I mean, at least the, at least the people look human in this one. You feel like you don't have to see toys bashing each other. This one, it feels more like the people actually are fighting. But it's kind of a waste of time because you don't really need it in this film. But, I mean, the story enough going on through those scenes that connect with the characters because I start focusing on how the characters react to everything as the basic emotion of the film. So it, so it still... Um, keeps going, it still keeps your interest even though the central villain's not really working. So, um, I'm going to conclude there because I think I'm going to start repeating myself. But it's still a very enjoyable film. I mean, um, it's a shame it they could have sorted what was wrong, but I'm still, I don't want to watch it again happily. There's lots of nice things there. It's, it's a fun movie, so. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one.